Yeah, danger is my assignment. This time it's Africa. Two of our best agents, Summers and Whitcomb, were sent into the jungle to locate the secret breeding grounds of the most powerful germ culture we've ever encountered. Summers and Whitcomb are a month overdue, so the commissioner has sent me to find them. It's the only trail out of the interior to Port Godfrey. Right. If Summers and Whitcomb are on the way out, they'll have to use this trail. I'm awfully glad they assigned you to help me, Mr. Lovett. Well, I'm very happy to cooperate, old man. Especially since it's to both our advantage to see these germs don't wind up in the wrong hands. I have an idea they're in trouble. like it came from up ahead. You better take a look. It might be a hunting party, but on the other hand, it might not. thinking the same thing. That's an American-made 4440. Yeah, but nobody but an American would carry a gun like that around here. We prefer our own. You recognize it? I'm afraid I do. That AS stands for... Summers. Any idea who did this? None. Well, there's no good looking for him. Give a fellow a 20-second start here and you'll never find him. Chala Mukara Chaka. Or I'm going to kill Chala. Take a look at that pack. I wonder where your other agent is. I have a hunch Whitcomb was in trouble. Summers was probably on his way to get help when he was ambushed. Probably by the guy that was assigned to guard Platka's parasites. Platka's parasites. Sounds fantastic. Unfortunately, it isn't. Platka was a European scientist sent here by unfriendly interest to develop his deadly germs. Yeah, but he died in Port Side last month, didn't he? Yeah, but he got his culture started and died of his own disease. Didn't he tell your chaps where the culture was hidden? No. We got a hunch he didn't have time to tell the other side either. Well, they must be good and deadly by now. Yeah, that's why we've got to find them before the other side. If Summer's death means what I think it means, they must be close. Yeah. Summer's dead and Whitcomb... You know, no idea where in the interior Summer's and Whitcomb were looking for these parasites, have you? Not the slightest. Well, if there isn't anything in that pack, I don't know where to look. And Africa's a pretty big place to search. Pretty crude affair. Yeah, it looks like he made it out of some kind of board. Yeah. What's that? Hey. Stencil of some kind. McDonough, looks like. McDonough? Yeah. Ring a bell? Slightly, but I can't quite place it. The McDonough Expedition. Yeah? About 15 years ago, a scientific expedition to the so-called lost city of Bengar. The witch? Lost city of Bengar. Supposedly some ruins rather deep in the interior. Actually, the whole expedition was a fiasco. They never found a thing. Their theory was that this so-called lost city never really existed. Or if it had all traces, it had slowly sunk away or rotted away or disappeared into the jungle. Interior? How far in the interior is this place? Oh, about 150 kilometers. Hmm. I wonder if Summers and Whitcomb could have been in that area. Summers could have found that almost anywhere in the jungle. Could have been carried off by natives or something like that. Uh, I suppose so. 
I'd still like to find out a little more about that region. Well, there is one man who might help us. Who? Stauffer, a white hunter, Fort Godfrey. Yeah? Well, let's look him up, huh? Back in Port Godfrey the next morning, we learn that Stauffer, the hunting guide, has just taken a party out. He only has about half an hour's head start on us, so we take out after him. Yes, Mrs. Kepler? You may call me Maria. What is it you wanted, Mrs. Kepler? Well, I'd like to take a picture of each one if you come through here. Of course. Oh, Colonel Frobisher, you're first. Right on, my dear. <laughs> now, make me look handsome. This is a risky business, you know. Make your husband jealous. Thank you. Ah. Senor Corrado? Thank you. You omitted your husband, Mrs. Kepler. This is a very strenuous business, Mr. Stauffer. You seem to be doing all right for yourself. Well, under such expert care, why shouldn't I? Thank you. Oh, uh, Mr. Stauffer. What does a hunting guide do in his spare time? A hunting guide has no spare time. How about a little breather here? Anything you say, old chap. I certainly could use one. Like love it. Excuse me. Hello, love it. Stopper. Steve Mitchell, United States. Glad to know you, Mitchell. Stopper. Mm-hmm. What can I do for you? You uh, know of a place called the Lost City of Benga? Uh, the area, sure. There's nothing much there but a small lagoon. Matter of fact, I happened to pass near there last week. Did you see or hear anything of two men called Summers and Whitcomb? Summers, Whitcomb. No. Could they have been in that area without you knowing it? Oh, well, there's always a chance. Not much of a one, though. The natives usually keep me informed if there are other white men around. Yeah, no. How do I go about getting there? No, <laughs> that's easy. Just tag along with me. You going near there? Yes, I've been hired to take this hunting party to the Kana Plateau country. That's right near there. Yeah, but it's a little late in the season, isn't it? I know, but they're anxious to get in some extra hunting, so I agreed to take them. But why are they? Well, that couple's a Mr. and Mrs. Kepler, retired colonel named Frobisher, and a Mr. Corrado. Did they know each other before they engaged you? Don't think so. Staying at the same hotel and cooked this up between them. I see. Mr. Stauffer, you've got yourself another customer. Glad to have you. Well, I'd better be getting back to Port Godfrey. Goodbye. Good luck. Goodbye, love it. Bye. Well, let me take you over and introduce you to the party. Okay, but uh, I'd appreciate it if you didn't mention the credentials I showed you. I never saw them. Come on.
Mitchell, this is Mr. and Mrs. Kepler. How do you do? Colonel Frobisher. How are you, sir? Delighted. Mr. Corrado. How do you do? I must say, you don't look your best in a pith helmet, Rudy. As long as you're amused, my dear. I'm sure we can fix that, Mr. Kepler. Oh, let him go. He's just in a grouchy mood. I think we're all sufficiently rested, Stopher. Yes, let's get started. Right, if uh, none of us has any objections, Mr. Mitchell's going to accompany us. Splendid. All the merrier. I do not agree. Small hunting parties have more luck than large ones. Where we're going, there's plenty of game for everyone, Corrado. Of course, of course. I predict we'll all bag a head or two. Besides, Mitchell's not hunting. He's going to do some sightseeing at a lagoon near where we're going. Binga? Uh, yeah. You familiar with that territory, Colonel? Oh, quite, quite. Uh, of course, I've never really been to the place itself, but uh, I'm well versed in the legend and lore of it. I see. Well, now that you know I'm not going to take any stuffed heads away from you, do you still object to my going along? Why should I? That's a good question. And you, Mrs. Kepler? Well, now, I shall be delighted. And your husband? Well, Rudy will probably suspect you're taking the trip because of me. Oh? But since we've only just met, uh, such a supposition would be quite groundless, wouldn't it? Hmm. Yeah. That was real cute, Barada. I'm sorry. It was inexcusable. Can I help it if I stumble? Why wasn't the safety catch on? The rifle is new to me. It will not happen again. It better not, Buster. I have already apologized, Mr. Mitchell. Maybe I better limit him to a cap pistol. That might not be a bad idea. Do you happen to know where any of them were yesterday morning? No. Fort Godfrey, I suppose. Summers, a friend of mine, was shot and killed right outside of Port Godfrey yesterday morning. What? He may have been coming from the Bengay area. His buddy Whitcomb might still be there. That's what I want to find out. And this party specifically has to be taken near the Benga area. Yeah. You think that was an accident, Mitchell? I wish I knew. dark in two hours. We'll camp here. Can't we get a shot at anything? Yeah, there's a water hole a couple of hundred yards from here. Splendid. We'll get in a spot of hunting while they're setting up camp. Come along, Mitchell. No, I think I'll stay here and help them set up camp. Oh, Maria? Well, you'd better go along without me, Rudy. Why? I have a headache. I'll just stay here and rest. Oh, I see. Good luck. Thank you so much. Well, Mr. Mitchell, we two seem to be the old stay-at-homes, don't we? Yeah. Don't you think you'd better go take care of your headache? Headache? Oh, yes, of course. The water hole's just ahead. Spread out and keep quiet. 
After the camp is set up, I wander over to the water hole. There's no sign of game or hunters. They must have moved on. I look around and wonder if the Bengal Lagoon is anything like this. I remember Lovett telling me the ruins there had supposedly sunk into the ooze without a trace. One look at this swamp and I can see how such a thing could happen. Hello. Oh, hi. Enjoying the scenery? Uh, yeah, sort of. How's the headache? Would you believe it? It's all gone. Yeah, I'd believe it. I think we'd get a better view from over there. <laughs> well, thanks, but no thanks. Uh, you're taking this trip with us just to see a swamp in the jungle. Mm -hmm. You must be very interested in it, Mr. Mitchell. <laughs> yeah, in a way. Where did it come from? Could have come from any place. Our hunters are very careless, aren't they? Yeah. Come on, let's get out of here. Well, right now I've got a lot of questions chasing themselves around in my head, all of them unpleasant. Was the shot carelessness? Was it Maria's jealous husband? Or was Maria a decoy to line me up for a shot by somebody who doesn't want me to make a trip to the Bengal Lagoon? When the hunters return to camp, Maria tells them about the accident. They all manage to look real innocent and shocked. I say, what a beastly thing to have happen, old chap. Oh, it could have been more beastly, I guess. As you see, others beside myself are sometimes careless with weapons. Couldn't possibly be me, old boy. You know, I moved away from the waterhole. Like to play the lone hunter, if you know what I mean. But I'm positive I was well out of range of camp. As it turns out, it would have been much safer to join the hunting party rather than stay here in camp, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, I guess so. Well, in any case, I'm quite sure the shot didn't come from my rifle. Oh, no? I found nothing to shoot, but I didn't use my rifle at all. Did you tell which direction the shot came from, Mitchell? No, let's forget it. I can't be sure, but I think Kepler's lying. Oh? We were all taking shots as they presented themselves. At one point, I was standing near a figure in a clump of brush as he fired. As I say, I can't be sure, but I think it was Kepler. I see. After this, I won't allow any of them out of my sight. I don't want any more of these so-called accidents. You've got company there. The next morning, we get an early start. By 10, we're near the foot of the Kana Plateau. Here's where we leave the trail and cut across to the hunting ground. The trail goes to the lagoon. Looks pretty rugged out there. It is, but it's the heart of the big game country. Oh, we should be taking advantage of it instead of wasting our time. All right. See you at camp this evening, Mitchell. Good hunting. Same to you. I've got in mind I want to do alone. My hunch is that somewhere close lies the answer, not only to what happened to Whitcomb, but maybe even the location of Plotko's parasites. Where's your husband? Well, I, I noticed my camera was missing. He went back to look for it. I said there was to be no more splitting up. The rest of you wait here.
Whitcomb. So they were here. I described in my report. I'm leaving this information here as a precaution in case anything happens to me. Well, Kepler? What? What's the meaning of this? Suppose you tell me that. I came back to look for my wife's camera. Very convenient alibi, Kepler. You know, maybe you're my boy. What are you talking about? The one who tried to kill me twice to keep me away from this lagoon. Oh, now you're talking nonsense. If I had followed you here to kill you, would I have come unarmed? Well, maybe you've got something there. Kepler! Uh... Kepler! Kepler! I've been looking for you, Kepler. I thought I made it clear no one was to leave the party. I was looking for... Go on back and rejoin the others. What's this? A grave. Whitcomb? Yeah. Follow the line of the grave... The short end to the edge of the lagoon. Okay. culture of deadly parasites. You mean someone has deliberately been culturing these parasites here? Yeah. That's what I was looking for. That's what Whitcomb and Summers were looking for. I have an idea that whoever killed them was assigned to guard these things until they could get them in bottles and get them out of here. And I think they're in our party. Got a line on who it might be? I'm afraid not, Stauffer. See, he didn't write anything except the location. What? Wait a minute. Some writing on the back here kind of faded. I didn't get a chance to destroy the cultures. I had to hide this information with Whitcomb's body before... Go on, Mitchell. for a murder charge, and when I get those bugs destroyed, the job's wound up. But the next time they tell me I've got to track a killer through the wilderness, I'm going to hold out for Central Park. Central Park.